publishes where users can create templates of visualizations, data-driven text and graphics with exact styling, branding and layout to drive the delivery of static reporting content to users. Often referred to as enterprise reporting, Publish provides offline access to analytic content using the same building blocks used for live interactive analysis. The template can then be easily scheduled and dynamically distributed as rendered publications to thousands of users with their own personalized slice of the data driving each analysis via email, the internet portal, mobile interfaces, or through webhooks like Teams or Slack. To launch Publish, open the module from the home page or from the app tab menu. Initially, we arrive at the new publication interface where we need to select a styling theme package, choose the page orientation, and size to optimize sizing and layout considerations. In the center of the workspace we have our page canvas. This is the first page in the publication and where we'll add content. At the top we have our ribbons to access functions and options. On the left we have the content tree from which we can pick pre-existing content to add to the presentation using simple drag and drop. On the right we have the page panel where we can add, remove and select pages in the overall publication. Above this we have access to the master pages which allow us to template designs for all publication pages. Let's start by enabling master page templates. I want to add a relevant title and subtitle to the cover page. And I'll change the layout for the standard content page a little. And this is now applied across all pages in the publication. Now I'll add content to my publication and arrange it on the page. I'll add some visualizations and discoveries from the My Content panel. We can use the alignment and grouping tools to arrange content items neatly. We can also use the matrix table and mini tab containers to add content. The matrix table container lets me add multiple items within a tabular structure with each item displayed as a tile. The mini tab container lets me add different items onto the same space that will conditionally be switched out when the template is rendered. Over here I have this very large grid that won't fit on the page in a legible size. So I'll enable the flow visual which will allow this item to be rendered across multiple pages based on its rendered size. I can use the same capability for this trellised chart, which is also far too big to fit onto one page. You can easily add static text to describe content in your report. However, the clever messaging can be delivered through dynamic text, which is data-driven text that is resolved when the publication is rendered. Dynamic text is a useful way to add personalised messaging and content to each rendered report for each individual recipient. This text is going to give me the total sales for Adihash manufacturers. Dynamic text is built using the dynamic text wizard. This could be as simple as selecting a cell, row or column, but most useful is the ability to construct prequel expressions using the functions library. Once we select the required function, we need to insert the relevant data points from the grid. Then we can test this and save it. Now that we have content in our template, 
we want to set up the framework to create different slices of data to inject into the template and generate different report results per data slice. This is done through the slices. The quickest way to add a slicer is to add an existing one from the content panel. We can also build new slices here in Publish using the Quick Slicer wizard. We click Add New Slicer, choose the data model, and then choose the hierarchy to drive the slicer. Once we've added slices, we need to decide which content items they should interact with. We can do that with the Interaction Manager. Here I can manage the interactions between slices and the other content in the template, which in turn determines how each visual or content item is rendered when the publication is run. To connect items, we simply add interactions between them by clicking the relevant checkbox. Before continuing, I'm going to run a manual print of the template using a single slice of data. You can see in the rendered output that the items I connected slices to are showing data only for Bikes and Adihatch respectively. Next, I want to add some more content to my template using page repeaters. Page repeaters use secondary slices to render a particular page multiple times for each item in the secondary slice. From the page repeater wizard, we need to add a new slicer, in this case Team Manager. And when this report is run, we'll get the content on page 2 repeated for each item in the Team Manager hierarchy, building out a more substantial report. Last, I want to launch my publication and distribute the content. First, I'll save my publication, and then I'll set up the rendering schedule. First, I'll choose the document format. Then I need to choose which slicer items should be used to generate the report when it's run. Next, I'll set up the time schedule. In this case, I'll set it to run every Monday morning at 8 a.m. So the new report content is received by users in their inbox when they get to the office. To ensure I'm not sending out irrelevant reports, I'm going to also set up a schedule trigger. When the publication is run, the trigger logic is checked. If it passes, the execution continues, otherwise it stops the production cycle. The ability to set execution con conditions can be done for schedules, individual reports, and even individual pages in the template. And finally, I'll configure the distribution, which will send a report to each user in the database as an email link. Once I click Save, the schedule is launched, and once it's run, users will see published content. We can see our page repeater in action, as well as our slices and our flow visuals as well. That wraps up our overview of Publish. To learn more about Publish, check out the video tutorials in the online help.